Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stony Brook University. My name is Lauren Santamino. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Stony Brook. I mainly travel in Connecticut. However, I have traveled more nationally in the past. I am joined by a special guest today. This is Tom Rigby. Feel free to introduce yourself, Tom. How's it going, guys? My name is Tom. I am a junior here studying biology. I'm from Suffield, Connecticut, which is four minutes south of Six Flags. So I'm right on the border of Massachusetts. Um, I'm an RA here, a resident assistant. I'm a tour guide here. Um, so yeah. So you know a lot about Stony Brook. Fair amount. <laughs> so he will be here to help answer any questions that you have for any current students. Um, so we have a lot to cover today. We're going to be talking about uh, the application process. So we did recently open our application online. So it is now live. Um, we're going to be talking about tips, requirements, criteria, common mistakes, what's the difference between the applications, um, and what is a Zimi profile, and if you should create one. So lots to talk about. But first, I want to ask you a little bit uh, from your perspective, if you can remember what it was like applying to colleges. First of all, do you remember how many colleges you applied to? I actually, uh, I didn't apply to too many. I applied to around six or so. That's a good number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, most of them were in the uh, Boston area. Um, this was the only New York one. Um, and coming to Stony Brook kind of snuck up on me. I uh, kind of chose it as, originally I saw it as like, you know, one of the schools that my dad went to. And then when finally I was doing all the research into it, I saw that, you know, it was a good price for even Connecticut students. And then also uh, had the strain, uh, the strong programs I was looking for, especially with the hospital and uh, physical therapy. And I'm looking to go into physical therapy. So perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so thinking back um, about the admission process, is there anything that you learned or you any advice that you may have for prospective students that might be helpful to them? Yeah. So I'm a. Uh, I'm kind of a notorious procrastinator, uh, so definitely set yourself some uh, deadlines. The big one that I had was uh, doing Thanksgiving as kind of the time when I want to have everything all done. Uh, so use the time in between to like you know kind of spread out the essays, filling out the application, talking to you know your professors, your teachers at school to help you out whenever, uh, however they can. Um, but also make sure that use your time to. Uh, you know, like uh, look at all the schools and look at them in depth and see what they can really offer and what they can really do for you. Because um, it's definitely you want to make sure that you're making the right educated decision. Very good point, which actually brings us into our next topic, which is deadlines. Um, so there's so many different colleges across the country and they all have different deadlines. Um, so it might actually be helpful if you create an Excel sheet or a list of the different colleges you want to apply to, what their criteria is and their deadlines. Um, because there might be an application deadline, there might be an honors deadline, there might be scholarship deadlines. Um, so that's a lot for all the different schools that you might be applying to. Uh, Stony Brook University just has a regular deadline, January 15th. Um, but however, like you were saying, we don't recommend applying on January 15th. Usually Thanksgiving time is a good time to apply because it does give you time. So you'll have enough time uh, to check your application status, and if anything is missing, you still have enough time to get it in before the deadline. So that's the most important part. Um, so again, we, we don't have early action, we don't have early decision, we're just a regular de deadline of January 15th. Uh, and then after that, we typically start sending out decisions, and all of our students will be notified by April 1st, the latest. Um, as far as the criteria goes, uh, we, so you're now on the new SAT. So we don't quite have the new SAT scores yet uh, because we haven't fully closed out our class for this fall. Um, that information will probably be up on our website after the beginning of the semester. So probably I'd say mid to end of September we'll have more of those numbers. In the past on the old SAT, the average SAT range was about a 1280 or so. That's critical reading math that was without the writing section. Uh, we also, our, our average GPA was about an A minus average. Um, we look at all the different types of courses you're taking, the level that you're taking them at. Uh, we'll also look at your activity resume, what you're involved in, letters of recommendation, your essay as well. So those are all really important um, pieces. 
for those of you interested in applying to an engineering program, you definitely want to have your calculus and physics completed in high school. So in order to be reviewed for an engineering major, you'll need to have those courses as well. So the essay, do you remember what your essay was about? Yeah, my essay uh, was about a trip that I took to Honduras to visit my brother. Oh wow, Yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So something to note in the description box below, we should have a link there, right it's there, right? Okay, just checking with my producers. Um, we have uh, special checklists for you. We have tips on writing the essay, um, resources as well for you to use, and um, we also have a checklist on our website, the Stony Brook University website, um, things to check off um, for when you apply as well. So all of that's in there. So when it comes to writing your essay, just generally speaking, you want to write about something that you're interested in, that you have a passion for, because then it will be interesting for others to read. So you definitely want to make sure to always have someone review it just to you know check for grammar and, and things of that nature. Um, but I can definitely tell you that when I review essays, I'm always looking to see um, a student's perspective, their point of view, do they form their thoughts well, um, and just the overall thought process of the essay. So, um, you know, it's important that you can write and that you can get your point across, because um, you're gonna need to do that in college. Uh, and the essay is also how we get to know you a little bit more personally. So, kind of one of my favorite pieces to the application as well. So definitely review those uh, PDFs of uh, things to look for um, when writing your essay. So in terms of applications, Stony Brook University is actually on three different applications. We're on the SUNY application, which is there's about 64 campuses to the SUNY system. So we're all on the SUNY application. So if you're going to be applying to multiple SUNY schools, then I would recommend doing the SUNY application. Then there is the common application. So the common application has a lot of private schools on it. However, public, public schools are also on the common app. So if you're going to be applying to a bunch of different private schools and, and some public schools that are on the common application, then you might want to consider doing the common application as well. And now there's also a new coalition application. Um, this application is slightly different in nature. Basically, you will create a profile on it you'll add the schools that you're interested in applying to. Um, and similar to the Common App, those individual schools might have some of their own questions for you to fill out. Um, but the interesting thing about the coalition application is you can add more information to your application. So um, maybe papers and things that you've done all throughout high school, you can actually upload those documents to it. Um, so it, it gives us a better picture snapshot of what you're doing, what you're involved in. Um, and I believe you can start as early as freshman year as well. So it's a great way to build that connection with colleges early on as well. Um, Jen, regarding GPA or test scores. So anything specifically regarding GPA or test scores or just in general? What we look at. So um, we'll look at your overall GPA. Um, however, when we look at that, we start with your unweighted, um, and then we'll look to see if you're taking any higher level courses. So if you're taking any APs or honors courses and things of that nature. So we were looking to see the rigor of your curriculum. We're also looking at the trend, so how you've done throughout high school. Obviously, an upward trend is great, and we really want to see that. Um, in terms of test scores, oh, this is important. So you can take the ACT, you can take the SAT, you can take both. We'll always take whichever one comes out higher. Now, when you apply, you can actually start filling out the application now. If you decide that you're gonna be retaking any test scores, perhaps October, November, uh, you can always list that on your application so that we know that you're gonna be sending more test scores in the future. Um, so that this way, you know, we can review you or maybe we'll, we'll hold off until we get your new test scores. Um, but ultimately, again, it's always, we'll take your highest um, scores. You know, it's always to help you, never to hurt you. And as I mentioned before, um, on the old SAT, our average was around a 1280 critical reading in math. 
Um, and then probably toward the end of September, we'll have the new SAT scores for this un incoming fall class as well. I mentioned we do super score, yes. Um, in terms of IB and AP credits, yes, we, <laughs> we like those. Um, we do take AP credits, AP credits typically a score of three or higher will get you credited at Stony Brook. Uh, IB credit usually a five or higher will get you credited at Stony Brook. Did you take any APs or IBs? Yeah, yeah, I took a bunch of APs and they actually helped me out with my core curriculum requirements that Stony Brook has. Um, nice. So I don't have to take some of those classes. Great, that's what we like to see. Yeah. Makes it a lot easier for your curriculum. Um, and then it also frees up room. So we have a lot of students who double major and, and major minor as well because yeah. they've gotten some room cleared up. Question regarding pre-med. So uh, we have a pre-med track at Stony Brook. So that's all the prerequisite courses you need to take to get into medical school. It's not a major, it's just an elective track. So you still get to declare a major. Ultimately, we want you to pick something that you're going to be strong in and that you're going to do well in. Uh, you will get pre-med advisors. They'll help see you throughout your time at Stony Brook, getting the right coursework, taking the MCATs, applying to medical school. Uh, and we do have the University Hospital right across the street. It's one of the top 15 teaching hospitals in the country. So you can do research there, internship work. Um, there's lots of opportunities for that as well. I see Chris writing. I see that there is another <laughs> question. No, I'll keep it rolling then. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about the different types of applications. Something also to note is the application fee is the same for all those applications. So ultimately, it's really whichever application you feel more comfortable with is perfectly fine with us. Okay. Uh, some common mistakes to avoid. This is my favorite part, I think, because you know we see them. And it happens every year, and whatever we can do to kind of help your process is great. So um, be consistent. This may sound weird, but you want to make sure that your application name is the same as your transcript and your SAT scores. So if your name, if you go by Jack, but your name is really John, you want to fill everything out according to like your legal name, basically. Um, unfortunately, a lot of things don't get matched that way, uh, and it, it takes longer for us to complete your application. So we want to make sure that everything is consistent all across the board. Um, this may sound silly, but you want to make sure you actually submit your application. Um, you have to go to the payment screen. You have to do the payment. and So even though you've done a lot of the steps and it may look like you've completed your application, um, if you don't get an application acknowledgement, that means we haven't actually gotten it. So definitely go through all of the steps, submit your payments, fees, all of that, um, and then you'll you'll get an email from us, uh, and we'll give you a Stony Brook ID number. So then this way you can log into your Solar account um, and check your application status. So you can actually see uh, when things get completed. So when we get your transcript and your letters of recommendations, so you can actually check that all on your Stony Brook account. So for you, I'm sure you, you still use your Stony Brook account to oh, this yeah, day. Oh, yeah, definitely. All the time. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of like your hub to the university. Yeah. Um, oh, transfers. Yes. We have a question regarding transfers. We do take transfers. Um, typically, for transfers, we're looking 24 or more credits with about a 3.0 GPA or higher. That's your overall GPA is a 3.0. Um, and if you've you know, taken courses elsewhere, we typically transfer over credits as long as you get a C or higher. Okay. Um, back to some of our common, oh, no, this is an important question. We have a question regarding food, which is very important to me, at least. <laughs> um, we have various types of food all over campus. We actually have about three different Starbucks opportunities. We have a fully service um, Starbucks in the library, which was recently renovated. We have in Roth, right? Yep. We have the Starbucks kiosk kind of thing yes. so you can that's in one of the residential halls um, and we also have a Starbucks mobile truck which is sometimes parked right outside of my building <laughs> which is awesome um, we have fresh sushi every day we have um, Southwest which is kind of like a Chipotle style type of place we have Mediterranean we have kosher we have vegan we have pizza and do you have a favorite on campus 
Well, I like the grilled cheeses. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big stickler for the grilled cheeses. They make them perfect. Oh, but, well, that's good. Um, also, they uh, they just introduced the new dining system, and I've been eating on it with the past couple of days with the RA training, and it's really good. Nice. Like, I've, I'm really happy with how it's going. The great thing is, is there's lots of options all throughout the campus, and you're not stuck to one specific area. You do have access to all those different areas as well, which is pretty cool. Um, also, when you're applying, you definitely want to try to check off the correct major and programs that you're interested in. So if you are going to be applying for an honors type program, you definitely want to check that off when you apply. Uh, because you may not be able to apply for it after that. Um, that's how we know to review you for any specialized type program. So definitely check that off when you apply. Um, you can do the supplemental part at a different time of the application. Um, just make sure that it is before January 15th. So you can start filling out the application now. Um, but, you know, and you can always go back to it at a later date. Just make sure, again, to submit it before the deadline. Uh, we have a question regarding honors criteria. So typically, they look for about a 1350 SAT. That was the old SAT score. Um, it, I'm not sure if it's going to change in regards to the new SAT, but definitely check back at the website again, probably end of September, and we'll have more of those numbers on there for you. So 1350 SAT, uh, critical reading and math, that was the old SAT score, and at least an E-minus GPA in order to be considered for Honors College. Um, the other thing, too, is there's also Honors type programs for various majors. So if you don't get into Honors College, you can still do an Honors track for different types of majors as well. Uh, if you're undecided, you can apply undecided. So uh, you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare your major. Um, so that's perfectly fine. Take your core requirements. Um, we also have a career center that can help you in terms of choosing a major. You can also start doing internships right away. It uh, looks like we had a question for scholars for medicine as well. Uh, you do need to check that off on your application if you're looking to apply. Scholars for Medicine is the eight-year medical program. So it's not accelerated, um, but they do reserve a seat for you in our medical school. So you have to apply coming in as a freshman. There's an interview process. Um, usually you have to meet those minimum criteria, like you would for honors as well, um, and then they will review you for that. They only take about 10 students, so it is highly competitive. We do get a lot of applications for it, but um, again, if you're interested, you definitely want to apply right on your application. Housing. I'm going to have you talk about housing since you're the RA. <laughs> All right, so typically we have two styles of housing for most incoming freshmen or first years. We have the corridor style, which is what I'm a part of, where it's kind of like the hallway with rooms coming up on either end. Um, it's a lot of fun to have you know your rooms open, get to know the people next to you. You can go down to the lounge, good uh, you know like a community living type of style. And then the other style is the suite style, where you have you know the hallway, but you have suites coming up on either end. So within the suites, you have like a little common room, and then three little or three rooms coming off of that common room. And then your own bathroom within each of the suites. So that's you know that's really nice later on once you get a good group of friends for your sophomore junior year, then you can uh, move in and you can try to get a suite together. Nice. There's a new residential hall that's oh yeah opened the, as well. The uh, the Fancy. Chavez and Tubman. Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're their suite style with single rooms and it's for upperclassmen, but uh, definitely you know like strive for that. It's the the nice uh, rooms on campus. Yep. Um, not you don't have to live on campus, but a majority of our students do. Right. Uh, we have about ninety percent of our freshmen, right, choose to live on campus. So it's it's a, it's a lot. We about ten thousand students overall living on campus. It's the most in the SUNY system. Um, so it does create a nice atmosphere. Um, you know, there is the weekend life grant as well. Do you want to talk right. a little bit about that and what happens on the weekends? So Weekend Life, they always uh, they have this council that they send out emails. They'll tell you where and when uh, different events are happening. So like homecoming or like different basketball games or something like that. Or if like a club has some kind of like you know get together, like you know uh, learn about what they're doing, or even just like a fun like you know like safe party with like bouncy houses or something like that. Something to relax a little bit in between studying. They always have something that you can do, and they make sure you know where it is. And your RAs will definitely be putting on some different um, weekend events as well within your building. So if you want to get to know people there too, 
uh, that's always an option. And concerts, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We have uh, one concert each uh, semester. One's back to Brook Brook Fest. Um, the tickets are usually only around like five to ten dollars, and we've had like Betty Wop, Time Flies, Walk the Moon, um, Bruno, Bruno Mars. Mars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally, like it's it's really cool uh, having all these big name people come to our university. And you pay like five or ten dollars. Exactly. Awesome. Um, you want to talk a little bit about Sweet and Corridor and the difference pricing and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, so there's no pricing, the, uh, no difference between the prices in uh, Sweet and Corridor. Um, whichever you're put into will be, you know, where you're just at. Awesome. Um, and back to some of our common mistakes um, or recommendations that we have for you. Um, you definitely want to apply using the correct semester. So if you are, I know it sounds crazy, but if you are currently in high school as a, or you're going into your senior year, you're going to be applying for next fall, 2018. So just make sure to check that off on your application. Add your mid-year scores, um, grades, what you're currently taking your senior year, your coursework, we will look at all that on your application. Your high schools can also set uh, first quarter and mid-year grades. We will take that into consideration also. Um, you can send your supporting documentation directly to us on campus. It's our 118 administration address um, that is on the website as well. But just so you know, all of the documentation will be coming directly to Stony Brook. You want to make sure to have an appropriate email address. You can imagine some of the ones we've seen. Um, perhaps you want to set up an email address and give your parents access to it so that they can also um, see it. But we send everything out over email. Um, we are we went green, so we try to do everything electronically. So application statuses, all that is going to be sent in an email. Also, uh, do students in the same major live together? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, what's interesting about Stony Brook is for our incoming freshmen, we have these living learning communities. They're called undergraduate colleges. Um, basically, they help take a large university. We have about 16,000 undergrads, and they help shrink it down for our incoming freshmen. There's about six undergraduate colleges. So they're affiliated with your residential hall. So the great thing about this is you get to know other people who live in your residential hall, and they all have a different theme. So they're purely interest-based. So let's say you like music. You might want to live in arts, culture, and humanities, um, and they have music practice rooms there, black box theater. Um, so it's a great way to get to know other students. Uh, now, also within these undergraduate colleges, you take your freshman 101 and 102 classes inside the residential halls, and that class is taught by your advisor. So you see your advisor on a weekly basis. So it basically helps bring everything full circle. Um, it really helps our students get assimilated to the university. Yep. Anything else you want to add to that? Or? Um, just that I'm a part of the global studies uh, nice. uh, quad, and as you can kind of tell, my essay was about Honduras. I like the <laughs> global studies, so a lot of international students. I've, uh, I had my roommate was from India, and we're still good friends, and it's just really awesome. cool. Great. I see we have another question. On respiratory care, excellent. Uh, respiratory care is held, ha housed within our health science program. Um, so a lot of our health science areas, you can get very specific um, in terms of coursework. Um, they are upper division, so you typically take those courses, you know, junior, senior year. Um, your first couple years, you will take all of your core requirements and, and prerequisites, um, but it's great hands-on opportunities having the hospital right across the street. Um, other things, other common mistakes. Oh, sorry, PT, since we're on the subject, yeah, you want to, so, you can go right ahead. <laughs> so physical therapy um, is kind of like the pre-med where we don't have a major for that because it's a uh, it's a graduate program. Um, so what you want to do is definitely talk to the uh, health advisor and they'll, uh, make sure that you get all your prerequisites done and make sure you're on track for that. Um, but also we have our pre-physical therapy club on here uh, on campus. We're meet over actually in the hospital where they bring us right to the place where they have the physical therapy classes. We went to a cadaver lab, so that was really cool. Saw all this, all the cool stuff. Um, but if you're interested in physical therapy, I definitely recommend uh, starting some volunteer hours. Um, you can do it with any normal clinic or anything like that. You'll need it to apply eventually, and it'll be a great way to know like whether or not this is right for you. And you don't even have to like you know worry about wasting time or anything because everybody you know, it's a very welcome type of thing within the physical therapist. And we do have a three-year doctorate program here at Stony Brook. 
yes. so very hands-on stuff. Um, so we have a question regarding sports. So we are Division One in athletics. Um, we have grown tremendously just in the last five years with athletics. Um, we also have club sports too, so you can still be involved. Are you involved in any types of? Yep, I'm on the ultimate frisbee team. Oh, cool. Yep. Yep. So uh, we uh, we go we practice three times a week down in the South parking lot fields or turf fields type area. Um, but we also go to New Jersey and Connecticut for different uh, different tournaments on the weekends. Uh, yeah. During spring break, we went down to Myrtle Beach. Um, so nice. there's different That's clubs and definitely join the Ultimate Frisbee Club. Yeah. We also Jim's have a club. Quidditch club, right? Yes. There's a rowing also. Yeah, there's lots of really cool things to be involved in. And all of our sporting events, they're all free for uh, students. So all you have to do is just show your ID and you can walk right in. Um, our basketball team made it to the NCAA tournament a few mm -hmm. years ago. That was awesome to be at, so definitely go out to these events. Uh, we have a question regarding out-of-state applicants and how many are how many students are out-of-state. Um, so when we review students, we're reviewing you academically, whether you're in-state or out-of-state, you still need to meet the same criteria. Um, in terms of how many students are out-of-state, I'd say about 25% of our students are out-of-state. Um, like I said before, we have 10,000 students living here on campus. Um, you could have students in Buffalo, New York, which is eight hours away. So even though they're from New York, uh, they're not necessarily going home on weekends and things like that. Uh, so there definitely is that, that those great opportunities right. for our out-of-state students to meet other out-of-state students and you know other students as well. And it's a lot of fun to meet other people from Connecticut. Um, I found out that not everybody knows what a grinder is. Um, so <laughs> it's fun to like poke around with people like that. Also Reese's peanut butter cups. They say it wrong here. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too funny. So we have a question regarding room. Singles, doubles, triples. Um, so, I don't know. You want to take this one, or you want me to start? Sure. Um, yeah. So <laughs> most freshmen, when you're coming in, you uh, should kind of expect to be in a uh, triple room, but then they will uh, reimburse you for every week that you'll be in it, and they'll actually put you through a detripling process throughout the year as rooms start to open up. So expect kind of around halfway through the year, you'll be put into a double room, and you can kind of you know have that roommate with you for the rest of the year, and then the years after that, you'll be mostly in a double, except for the few buildings like. Uh, the building I'm in has some singles in it too, so if you want to go into there, then you know that's an option that you can uh, apply for as well. Most students who are tripled and they they have the option to do triple tend to just stay the way they are because they've already made two really great friends. Yeah. Um, they kind of have their schedules down yeah. and and they like to keep it that way. Um, the upperclassmen we do have the new residential hall that is single style bedrooms, um, so we have that too. So there are lots of different options. Uh, fun stuff to do off campus. So we are on an island, so we are surrounded by water on, an, on the North Shore. Um, you can go into the village of Stony Brook, so that's also near the water as well. It's a cute, quaint little town, stores, ice cream shops, those type of things. You can go into Port Jefferson, which is actually where the ferry comes in from Connecticut. So there's lots of restaurants there um, to go out, hang out, beautiful in the, in the, the great weather. We also have the Long Island River train station right on our campus, so you can head directly into New York City. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that and your experiences? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm not used to trains, and it's pretty cool having it. Um, it's around an hour and a half to get into the city, and it's only like $18 there and back, so it's really affordable. Um, so you can go right into Penn Station. Uh, my friends from New York were showing me around all the big places. Uh, we went to Rockefeller Center when the big tree was up. So. Oh. A lot of cool things to do. Yeah, and you can see Broadway shows and sporting events and concerts and museums. So all of that is at your access being near New York City, but you also get to be in a suburban area as well. We have a question about scholarships. We will automatically review students for academic scholarships when they apply. Uh, so you don't need to fill out anything additional. And then we will send you a letter if you've received those scholarships. Uh, in the past, those letters tend to go out after the admissions decision letters. So if you don't get it with your admissions decision letter, don't worry because it, it's possible it still might be coming as well. Um, we, I have a few other common mistakes or recommendations for you all. Um, you definitely want to continue with your math and your science. 
during your fourth year of high school. Um, even if you're not going to be taking those areas, definitely math because we are a research school, so it definitely helps to have that background. Um, if you self-report your test scores on your application, that doesn't actually mean that you've sent us your scores. You have to do it through College Board or ACT and request for them to be electronically sent to us. So that is important as well. Um, and if you're going to be using a fee waiver, you need to upload that or send it separately. If we don't receive it, then we will request the application fee um, in, in the future. So we won't be able to re review your application without it. So sometimes that holds up the application. Um, that's why it's always good to always call and make sure that we did get uh, your application. Because if we didn't, then we say, oh, you might not have paid. You have to go back into your account um, and things like that. So the other thing we wanted to talk about today was the Zimi profile and what is it. So it's basically a virtual resume kind of thing. Like this is a new thing that's going on now. Um, the cool thing about it is, is you can upload documents. It also has video capabilities. So you can also upload videos as well. Um, but it's a great way for us to kind of learn more about you. Um, you can start your freshman year as well. Tell your story, your interests all those types of things. Um, and then once you create it and you are starting the application process, um, you can either add the link to your common application or you can email it to the schools. Um, and then we'll be able to view that also. So, um, so it's kind of similar in the sense how the common app has ways for you to upload information. If you're not using the, co I'm sorry, the coalition application. The coalition, you can upload stuff. So if you're not going to be using the coalition, but you still want to um, be able to do those types of things, um, you can use Zimi. And I believe we also have a screenshot of what it looks like right now on the computer. So just something to think about. Um, if you have a lot of projects and things that you've worked on that you're really proud of and you want to show them off, then you know that might be a good option for you as well. So I think we're running low on time now. Um, Something for you to know, definitely check out our description box. We have all of those links in there for resources, um, you know, essay writing tips, our website as well, stonybrook.edu. If you want to come visit campus, we highly recommend it. This could be your tour guide right here. <laughs> um, and then, you know, definitely you can make your reservation online at the website as well. Uh, you can always email us at enroll at stonybrook.edu. And we have one other question regarding bikes and buses so uh and cars so for bikes i actually do have my own bike on campus just bring my own bike lock and can like uh, lock it up um but if you don't have a bike we do have a bike share program that you can just uh, use one of the university bikes uh first hour or so is free and then every hour after that is like two dollars but there's stops everywhere so you don't even have to worry about that um, buses they have buses that bring you to port jefferson or to uh the smith haven mall as well as their own shuttle system on campus so if it's target, raining outside target bed bed beyond that's all right near campus anything so you need really. easy easy to get stuff that you need right. freshmen and sophomores are not allowed to have cars on campus but it's really easy having the bus system the bikes the train so very easily accessible and your ap credits count for the uh cars too so you might get a little earlier oh yeah. interesting uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Definitely, if you have questions, email us at enroll at stonybrook.edu. Uh, follow us on Twitter because you'll find out a lot of information that way as well. Uh, and we hope to see you on campus. So yeah. thanks again, everyone. Have a Good nice luck. Day.